try to learn from other people, but not copy them exactly. Do it in your way. Mm -hmm. And my cousin Harlan gave me some advice when I was young that I always liked, which was never let yourself get taken advantage by other people and never take advantage of other people. That's a really important lesson. Uh Hey guys, it's the girl Kyle, and you're watching Spill It. This is a show that gives you a glimpse into the performer's mindset and reveals the person behind the persona. Testing one, two, three. Somebody has got to pinch me because today, joining us in the virtual Spill It studio is the ultra talented musician extraordinaire Kevin Hearn. Kevin is best known as the multi instrumentalist from Bare Naked Ladies, the multi platinum selling band he's been playing with for over two decades. One of the most respected Toronto musicians of the past 25 years, Kevin has collaborated, recorded, and performed with incredible artists such as Gord Downey, Violent Femmes, Laurie Anderson, Carol Pope, Garth Hudson, The Persuasions, The Cranberries, Ron Sexsmith, and The Rio Statics. One of his closest relationships, both musically and personally, was the late, great Lou Reed, from whom Kevin acted as the keyboardist and musician director from 2007 up until his passing in 2013. None of us can be everything to everyone, but Kevin will tell you that when he makes his own records, he follows his heart and his curiosity. If that sounds like you, or even if it doesn't, stay tuned as this episode is for you. Before we get started, I want to shine the spotlight on Music Counts. Music Counts is Canada's music education charity that is affiliated with Paris and the Juno Awards. Their mission is to build accessible and sustainable music programs for in-need schools and communities across Canada by providing musical instruments, equipment, and resources. To help them put instruments into the hands of kids that need them most, visit musiccounts.ca. Welcome to the show, Kevin. Oh, hello. How are you doing? (laughs) Really good. Did you know for sure when you were younger that you wanted to be a professional musician or was there something else you thought you might be when you grew up? There was a lot of music in my household growing up. I just, I fell in love with the Beatles when I was five and the Beach Boys and it put a spell on me. The first real professional band I was in was called the Look People. And I started playing in the Look People when I was in high school. My girlfriend at the time, Susie, she kind of recommended me to her friends because they were looking for a keyboardist. But it was kind of a crazy band. That's our first record. And that's that's me in the background there. <laughs> my bandmates were all 10 years older than me. My first professional gig out of town was actually in, at Call the Office with the Look People. Wow. <laughs> and I was still in high school. Yeah. That's a lot to get done already when you're just in high school. Yeah, I was ready. And now you mentioned you were with the Look People, but then how did you get involved with the Bare Naked Ladies? I ran into the Bare Naked Ladies because they were just starting out at that time. Mm-hmm. And we sort of knew each other from the Toronto music community. We shared a rehearsal space with a band called the Rio Statics. And I kind of got invited into their orbit and started playing with them as well. And a comedy troupe called Corky and the Juice Pigs. They really liked the look people. So we collaborated on something called the Bazooka Joe musical. We would act out the comic strips and add music to them. And Bare Naked Ladies were big fans of Corky and the Juice Pigs, too. So they kind of were aware of me because they saw me play with those bands. And Jim's brother, Andy, was the keyboardist in the band for the two first records. I ran into Tyler Stewart one day at the Horseshoe Tavern. And he said, hey, Kevin. I said, hi, Tyler. He said, we were talking about you today. And I thought, because I didn't know him that well. I said, oh, why? Yeah, he goes, well, Andy's leaving the band and we don't want to do auditions and go through all that. We'd really of course. Be in, we'd want to ask you if you'd do a two month tour with us. I found out years later that there was a fellow, a, a real music personality here in Toronto named David Bookman, who's sadly no longer with us. But apparently he was the one who recommended me to those Ooh. guys. Yeah. So pretty sweet. Yeah. And so I did the two month tour. And then they asked me to join full time. And that was in 1995. When I started playing at Massey Hall with the choir, I remember I had to sing a a few solos once. 
And I asked our conductor, Father Armstrong, I said, is it normal to feel nervous? Uh, he said, you know what it means? I said, what does it mean? He goes, it means you're human. I learned a lot of lessons, you know, performing at Massey Hall and being with the choir. Mm -hmm. And now on top of being a member of the Bare Naked Ladies, you also have produced your own solo albums. How would you describe your music? Each song is like a little mini movie. A lot of people say my, my music has like a dreamlike quality. I like that. And now who are your main musical influences? Uh, well, I mentioned the Beatles. Um, when I was nine, I was playing lawn darts with my friend Billy across the street. And he had a an old tape deck with the radio in it. And I heard this song come on that just blew me away. And it turns mm -hmm. out it was a song called Walk on the Wild Side by Lou Reed. That opened a whole door of to another world of music that I didn't know. He was my musical hero all my life since then. I had his photo up in my locker and learned mm -hmm. all his songs. And That's wonderful. And what would you say your music says about you? You know, there's a philosophy by an artist that I really like that I, I'd like to apply to myself if I could. And he's an indigenous artist named Norval Morriso, and he considered himself a shaman. And he said the world was full of gray and he wanted to bring color into it. And he wanted to heal people through his paintings and through his colors. Mm -hmm. And for me, if I would like to say anything about my music is that I hope I can do something similar with it in that I can offer an insight or experience or an emotional reaction to people. And what are some of your biggest musical challenges? I don't know. I think if you stop trying to learn or stop trying to hone your craft better, then you can sort of just kind of ride it with what you have. The challenge for me is to keep learning and pushing myself, you know, to do better and try new things. In fact or fiction, you released an album called Havana Winter. That's fact. I made that record. Uh, it's called, yeah, Havana Winter. I made that with Michael Philip Williavoda. And that's a special record for me. Uh, it has Lou Reed plays guitar on it and Laurie Anderson plays violin. And uh, it's, it's dedicated to my daughter, whose name is Havana Winter. And fact or fiction, you created an exclusive EP called Kevin Hearn and Friends Present the Superhero Suite in support of Music Count. That is fact. Cold yeah. hard fact. And okay, let's talk more about Music Counts for a minute. Why was it important okay. for you to be involved in a project like that? Well, we spoke about my school earlier and how there were piano studios right there and for for any child who wanted to pursue uh, music it was readily available to them and scientific studies have proven that music helps in the development of the brain mm -hmm. but uh, nowadays there's just constantly cuts to programming and and music is yes. one of the things that suffers the most so I wanted to do this fun project that involved making a, a medley of superhero songs. And I wanted mm -hmm. to involve people I'd worked with over the years, sort of to just reconnect and do something fun. But I didn't want to do it as a business thing where I was trying to make money off of it. So I felt it was kind of a perfect project to sell and raise money for music counts and sort of give back and try to get instruments into the Definitely. schools. And that's a fly-in community uh, in the Northwest Territories. And all those instruments were bought from the Superhero wow. Project. Thank you, Kevin and the Superhero Suite family. <laughs> so, you know, that makes me happy. Those kids yeah. have guitars and violins, and maybe they can try and write some songs or express what they're feeling. Or, and that's what I needed to do when I was a kid. You know, I needed to skip class and go play the Incredible Hulk. So you got to be able to do these things. Definitely. In the title, it says Kevin Hearn and Friends. Who are the friends who performed in that EP with you? Um, got the Persuasions, who are a legendary a cappella group. Wow. Uh, I've got Michael Ray, uh, the Shuffle Demons, <laughs> Mary Margaret O'Hara, the Rio Statics, wow. Ron Sexsmith, 
uh, Lou Reed's band, The Violent Femmes, Bare Naked Ladies, Colin Hay, Aaron Jensen and Countermeasure, my cousin Harland Williams, uh, Corky and the Juice Pigs are on there separately, Alan Doyle, wow. Carol Pope, The Look People, you know, everybody's on there that was, you know, a part of my life. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a real labor of love. And then I, my friend Lockie did all the artwork, which, you know, oh, that's put everybody really cool. in there. Yeah, we did like a comic book. But my cousin Harland Williams did the backup. It's like a spoof of the, the comics. You'd find advertisements at the back. So you can buy your very own onion glasses, Spanish or Bermuda. Oh. Grow authentic yellow porcupine teeth. Anyhow, my cousin Harland's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> Nominated for uh, Artwork of the Year in the Junos. So very proud of that. And uh I loved working with Music Counts. I'd like to do something um, again with them. They say if you're playing pool against someone who's better than you, your your game becomes better too. And I think you look for those situations where working with someone can elevate you and you can learn and sort of let them take the wheel, but also recognize when you can do that for someone else as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the pandemic has been really hard on the entertainment industry. How have you kept yourself busy while you're not touring? Uh, just daily routines, meditating, riding my bike, working on projects, projects that help with my craft. You know, with the Bare Naked Ladies, immediately we started wondering how can we stay connected through this time, uh, both as a band and with our fans, our audience so we started doing these selfie cam jams. First, they were just with our iPhones and we'd each send our footage to our director friend, Edward, and he'd put them together. And if you look at the older ones, they're very sort of do-it-yourself quality. Tyler, yeah. I think, was just playing on a, a counter or something with sticks. But as we kept doing them, we, we all started becoming better engineers and learning how to record our yeah. microphones and mic our drum kits and... I think we've all improved our game in that sense through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. What lessons, if any, have you learned during the pandemic? You know, certainly I'm sure we all feel uh, grateful for things that maybe we took more for granted. Yeah, definitely. Like connecting with loved ones and family and friends and just the idea of sitting in a restaurant with a friend. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, it just seems like, wouldn't that be so nice right now? But totally, uh, mm -hmm. we haven't played a show now in over a year. Wow. I th think when we do play a show, when I get on stage again, I'm going to play like Jimi Hendrix. I'm going to be, you know, playing the piano with my teeth and lighting it on fire, whatever it takes. <laughs> and you're going to be up there with your nunchucks and it's, we're going to rock the world. Let's okay? do it. Let's put a plan in action for when it's all over. We're going to need you. Would you have any advice for artists or songwriters wanting to follow in your footsteps? I guess what I usually tell people when I'm asked this question is just keep working and try to find your, your own voice. Well, and now that's all the time we have. But before we go, do you have any final words of wisdom you'd like to leave our audience with? To it and add it, add it and to it. You got to tune your attitude in. If you don't get to it when you get at it, you won't get to it to get at it again. Wow. <laughs> That's a Stomp, Stomp and Tom Connors song. <laughs> I was definitely not expecting that. <laughs> and once we're off air, where can our viewers find you? Um, Kevin Hearn Music on Instagram is where I'm most active. I post something every day. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being ready to spill it with us, Kevin. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us today. That was fun. Thanks for inviting me. Hang in there. This week's episode has come to an end, but the fun doesn't have to end here. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, head on over to our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Like, share, and get involved. Until next time, stay awesome, stay driven, and always be ready to spill it. Akaya, out. <laughs>